be you, be more you. And then can you even be more than that? Can you transcend beyond the limitation of your energetics and be, you know, all five elements? So when you do alchemy on top of the five elements, first, we need to figure out what element you are. We need to figure out your authentic self. Then how do you be more than that? How do you not be limited by your element? It's wonderful that you're wood or you're fire and let's celebrate it and let's, let's help you be it. You know, if you can be all five elements, you're a sage. How can you make the changes? They're not easy. They're a little bit hard, but they, sh you know, alchemy is like, but they can be easy. It's just putting yourself first. And that's hard mm -hmm. for people. It feels selfish, but truly it's not because if you're recognize that a little selfishness means everyone gets to benefit. And why is that? Because you have a gift to give to the world. Your mm -hmm. special gift has to get out to the world. If you don't be selfish and prioritize that, then everyone else who needs your gift loses. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Chinese Medicine Podcast. I'm so happy to have you today um, join with us because I've got a really special guest, Lita Herman, and she is um, a Chinese medicine practitioner, but in a completely different way to probably what you're used to. Um, so we're going to let her explain what she does and talk about it. But um, she's a, it's, this relates to five element acupuncture and it relates to more than just like the physiology of your body. So if you're interested in mental health, if you're interested in like um, exploring who you are as a person and going beyond that and into what you can kind of do um, as a, like who you are like so the series that I've done before on those kinds of things if you like those stuff then <laughs> you're probably gonna love this and so Lita does alchemical Chinese medicine it sounds really mystical and really cool um, and I can't wait to talk to her so um, I hope that you enjoy our conversation and please leave comments below we're going to put all her links to um, her podcast and uh, to her um, stuff that she has so you can you can check all that stuff out as well and we'd love to answer your questions in the comments below if you have those as well so welcome Lita thank you thank you so much Thank you for um, getting up early in the morning. Yeah, I, I did. I got up early in the US. It's, uh, you know, quite early, but that's fine. <laughs> yeah, we're on opposite times. We're at the yin and the yang of the world yes, at the are. moment. <laughs> we are. <laughs> awesome. So later, I've listened to your podcast, um, Inspired Action, um, and it is really inspiring. I really found it, oh, it found you. it great. And I think our listeners are going to love to hear about what you do and to also be introduced to your podcast. Um, could you tell us a little bit about what is al alchemaic or alchemy style of acupuncture and uh, Chinese medicine? Awesome. So, you know, we have uh, the idea that acupuncture is energetic medicine that helps our healing every day. So what we're trying to do with acupuncture is keep people in a really good like state of health on a day-to-day -day basis. So, you know, you go to the acupuncturist, if you have an ache or pain, you go to the acupuncturist, if you're unwell, or you just go to the acupuncturist, hopefully for maintenance on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, just keeping that health going, keeping everything humming along, keeping all your uh, meridians flowing, keeping everything balanced and harmonized. That's, that's sort of the goal of acupuncture. But what about trauma? What about, you know, things like PTSD? What about depression? What about addictions? These are all things that are not really day to day, they're lifetime issues. And so many people um, today are dealing with these lifetime issues. They're really, really big. And uh, alchemy is something that is working beyond that day to day level of acupuncture. So, you know, in, in acupuncture, most of the time, we're talking about something called the primary channels. These are the channels that, that help us get all the regulation of the chi flow and all these things that, that Marie does such a good job explaining. And, and that's wonderful, that's awesome. But what about those deeper emotional issues that people are struggling with day to day? And that's what where alchemy picks up. So alchemy is looking at a couple different things, but primarily first and foremost, what are the hooks that are in you? What are the ghosts that are haunting you from the past? What are the things that are causing you to have obsessive thinking, for example? Obsessive thinking comes when you know you have these difficult 
times in the past or really bad encounters with other people, you know, trauma, um, negative, you know, stories in your life. And so you have these negative stories and then, you know, the, the, those sort of settle into you on a physical level as well. So we, you know, we all know psychosomatic is a real deal. Mm -hmm. Um, so those psychosomatic problems sort of infiltrate in, into the cellular level. So the first step of alchemy is how do we clear that out? How do we release you from that emotional baggage that you're carrying like these heavy loads on your shoulders uh, from the past? And, and that's the first step of alchemy is, and we use a technique called the 13 ghost points and the 13 right. ghost points. Yeah, most acupuncturists are very familiar with them. They are talked about a lot, but not many people know what to do with them. Like they're not that day-to-day -day level acupuncture. They were invented uh, many years ago by a very famous acupuncturist, Sun Si Miao. And Sun Si Miao is the most famous acupuncturist from China. He is in every temple. He's, you know, his, his figure mm -hmm. is in every temple. Everywhere you go, it's about Sun Si Miao. And he was actually called the king of medicine. Now he put together these 13 points to represent all the ways that trauma hooks into you. It starts with this idea that there's like a door to you. How do you interface with the world? And, and that's like changes when there's trauma, you know, you might have this wide open door and be happy and lovely. And then, you know, you have trauma and now you locked all the, the, you know, you have like 10 locks on your deadbolts yeah. on your door. And so that all changed because of trauma, that's not the true you. Mm. So what we're trying to do is get you back to your true essence, your true authentic self through this work called the 13 ghost points. And so that's the first step of alchemy. But after we sort of work through the clearing and there's several other ways to clear, then we want you to evolve. So first we want you to accept yourself. And, and this is, we've incorporated a lot of the five elements. I know you've talked about the five elements, Marie. It's so much fun. The five elements is about who are you fundamentally? Who were you born as? What is your true nature? A little bit like astrology, but we don't look as much as astrologically at it. We look at it energetically. How do you move through the world? And that's the mm. five elements. So when you do alchemy on top of the five elements, first, we need to figure out what element you are. We need to figure out your authentic self then how do you be more than that? How do you not be limited by your element? It's wonderful that you're wood or you're fire and let's celebrate it and let's, let's help you be it. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's really what the elemental acupuncture is about. It's like, be you, be more you. And then can you even be more than that? Can you transcend beyond the limitation of your energetics? and be, you know, all five elements. Uh, they yeah. say that, you know, if you can be all five elements, you're a sage. Um, and so, you know, that's something I've been practicing in my workshops for years and years is like, I try to emulate each element perfectly, you know, so that I can, you know, maybe become a sage and, mm. and, and that kind of thing. So uh, fundamentally, even alchemists did want to become sages and they wanted to even become immortal. And there were, you know, these legendary people like Ludom Bing's in my corner there, yeah. Ludom Bin, he was one of the most famous immortals. And so, you know, this was the idea that you could evolve yourself so much to uh, like, some people would call it enlightenment. Some people would call it immortality. You know, there's all different ways to look at that concept. Yeah. Wow. And that's, that is the whole package of alchemical Chinese medicine, because we do this through a combination of points, like with yep. the ghost points, we do this with stages of points where you work through this over a very long period of time and grow yourself and evolve yourself. And we also do a lot of meditations with it as well, which we've um, been talking about in the podcast. We have a website called the alchemy learning center.com where we actually have recorded some of the meditations so people can have guided meditations to help them through the alchemy. Yeah. Wow. So, that sounds yeah. great. <laughs> it sounds yeah. really awesome. <laughs> it's really fun. It's really good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And look, um, when I started listening to your podcast, I was really intrigued by the Wu Wei stuff that you were talking about. And I've heard this mentioned before. And I often wonder, like, why isn't that part of 
Chinese medicine and what you're saying now about this um, alchemist of approach do you think that it was part of Chinese medicine when Sun Tzu Miao was around was is this what it, you think he was doing and it's been sort of dropped away because of the communists or because of other things it's just mm-hmm. not been popular yeah absolutely I mean if you look at the Tao Te Ching it's all about Wu Wei yeah and so that's the fundamental basis of the medicine And then I agree, you know, there was a lot of politics in the last century in China that changed Chinese medicine dramatically. And, uh, you know, what's interesting is in a weird way, the communists brought back Chinese medicine to Mm. popularity because they wanted to do everything Chinese. They just wanted to take the spirituality out of it, you know, back when they were really not sort of against uh, religion as a whole. And so they wanted to take the Taoism out of Chinese medicine, which was virtually impossible because the points are named these mystical names and, and mm. all of that, but, but it was just neglected. And so all of that kind of was simmering underneath the surface with the, mostly with the people who left China. So, you know, one of my teachers, right. Jeff, Master Jeffrey Yuan, he's an 88th generation Taoist priest. And now we were able to go back to China with him and travel in China and nobody cares. Like the whole religion thing seems to have gone by the wayside in terms of their, um, you know, rejection of that. Mm. And so Taoism is accepted now, um, it seems to be, at least in my opinion, uh, traveling through China, but, but for a long time it wasn't. And so people like his grandfather had to leave and flee. His grandfather Mm. was one of the most prominent Taoists in China at the time when the communists took over. So, so, you know, every, everyone had to leave. And um, so a lot of the studies that you're getting are out of China. That is about this work um, from, from the last century, meaning that even some, I've heard even Chinese coming to the U S or, you know, maybe Australia or England or whatever, coming to these other areas or France was really big too coming to these other areas to study the work instead of in China, because yeah. in China, it was just straight up TCM, you know, just really the, the function of Chinese medicine, that day-to-day healing, the day-to-day getting the chi flowing, all of that was still prominent in China, but they just stripped it of the spirituality. Yeah. And so the Wu Wei, getting back to the question, mm. the Wu Wei, that means you know, I like to translate it as inspired action. I like the idea that it's not, some people say non doing or non action, but that makes it sound like you're not doing anything. Yeah. And it's, it really is imagine the best way I describe Wu Wei is imagine that there's a footstep, a set of footsteps in front of you, your next steps. And all you have to do is kind of clear your mind enough, be present enough in the world to to put your foot in the right footstep. You're just following your Tao without overthinking it, without getting in your own way, like we do so much yeah. you know, as human beings. And that's what the Tao Te Ching was really saying. That's that's really what you know the, the Taoist philosophy is, is to is to a sage is someone who can do that. A sage is someone who just everything just lines up for them. Everything, that next footstep is the right footstep every single time. And that's sort of the idea of that uh, sage status that people are trying to get to. Yeah, right. It sounds like a lifelong journey. <laughs> it to is. Get there, right? <laughs> it is. You might need to become an immortal so that you can achieve it. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. I think yeah. I think a, a reasonable goal for us mere mortals is to at least achieve Wu Wei some of the time. You know, yeah. it's nice when you feel like a, a lot of people say, athletes say, when I'm in the zone. You know, when you're in the zone, you know it. You just feel it. Everything is just right with the world. Mm. And that's, that's really Wu Wei. That's what we're trying to get to. That's that, you know, the athletes do it because they get to this, this place where they no longer have to think about, you know, the snowboard or the skis or the, you know, the swimming in the pool, like the stroke that they're swimming. They don't have to think about it anymore. They just do it. And that's why they feel, I think they're the, the best example of being in that Wu Wei moment. Yeah. Okay. That's, you know, easy yeah. to explain. So that's a great example because 
I've heard some people talk about the Wu Wei thing and it, it does like what you said, makes it seem like, oh, you're just going to sit there on the couch and life's going to come to you. <laughs> Someone's going to knock on the door and make your dreams come true. <laughs> you're just going to no. be poor because nothing will happen, right? I know, um, I, know. But, I know. Oh, that sounds like an easy way out. I'll get that some of that yeah. Wu Wei. But um, exactly. like, <laughs> so you- Couch potato Wu Wei. <laughs> yeah, not, not that one. Um, but yeah, so when, to get to that level of being an elite athlete, you have to push, push, push at at some things as well to get there. And you, but you, but you must be pushing in what you're supposed to be doing and moving forward and taking action in what you're supposed to be doing versus someone who like thinks, oh, I'd love to be a celebrity and they're not really cut out for it. And they're just going, going, going like trying to make yeah. something happen that just is that what you would say is like the the yeah part of it yeah it you know uh this is why understanding your elements is so important because if if we don't do this work from the foundation of acknowledging who we truly are you know we may have dreams and aspirations but they don't line up with who we truly are if, mm. if you're a person who is very yin, you know, quiet, reserved, held back, um, you might not want to be, you know, very young in the world, but your parents told you to do this or that. And so then you go and you try to do that. And of course, you're not in your woo way at that point. There's nothing inspiring about doing what your parents told you to do. No. Nothing, nothing inspiring. So it's like, what is your spirit calling for? What is your spirit really wanting? And the five elements are often a clue. Okay. You know, the wood, the wood element people are often leaders in the world. They, they rally people together. They motivate people. They inspire people. Uh, mm. You've got a lot of wood, Marie. I, <laughs> yeah. not, I don't know you that that well, but I, I get the wood. And yeah. so that's why you're so good at what you do because you inspire people, you gather people together, mm. you, you marshal people forward and that's the wood element. And so, you know, to recognize that in yourself and then again, then to say, Hey, that's what I do. That this is, this is a good match. Like mm. that really feels good. Um, fire is a little bit, is also out in the world, but a little bit more, um, you know, friendly, smiley, not so much like, let's go everyone go, you know, follow me. It's more like, Hey, I'm your best friend. I want to be your best friend. You know, it's like, it's, it's always sharing the love. And so again, very out in the world, but you can imagine it's a lot about people. When they walk into a room, they, the first thing they do is look for the other people and look at the faces and do facial recognition. Who do I know? Who do I know? You know, a wood person walks in the room and say, you know, it's like, what needs to happen here? Mm -hmm. Like it's just a really different, you know, vibe. And then when you get to earth, it's also very relational, also very people oriented. So earth earth people need to have a community of people together. They want to gather people together a little bit like wood, but less in charge, more just supportive. Mm-hmm. And so they, that's sort of their role. Um, and so they, they would, they do very well in anything that's related to hospitality or, or emotional, um, discussions, like getting people to talk about their feelings, you know, that kind of thing. I always say sit in a circle and kumbaya, you know, it's yeah. like <laughs> that, that makes people, that makes earth people really happy. And then you get to metal and water, and now you're going to become a little bit more held back, but that doesn't mean they're not involved in the world. They're definitely involved in the world. It's just, they, they may not always assert themselves in the world and mm-hmm. metal is more so hanging back but, you know, can take a position of power. I mean, traditionally, they were like the judge on the bench, you know, someone who is kind of reserved and yep. can easily be unbiased and unemotional and still be able to um, help people get to the, the rules of what needs to happen. That's a really, that's a great metal role. So that, that doesn't mean that they're all like that. There's many metal mm. artists. There's all kinds of different kinds of metal people, but But again, like an artist is often solitary for a lot of the time and then out in the world and showing their art and doing these other things. But there's a there's a big um, sort of quieter aspect to that. And then water is also quiet, but can then turn into this like expressive person. So they can oddly be very quiet and like a, a, 
engineer or an accountant or someone who likes to crunch numbers and do little finite things, but at the same time, they could be an actor and that in the same person, you know, they might do yeah. community acting because they like to kind of be expressive in a controlled, safe way. Mm -hmm. um, and so, so when you look at those five, the two very young ones, the two very yin ones, the two yang are the wood and fire, the two yin are the metal and water, and then earth is right in the middle, both yin and yang. Once you start understanding that about yourself, then you can kind of say, this is my Wu Wei path. Like this makes yeah. sense. Like, or no, I'm in the totally, I'm, I've got it. You know, I've been pushing so hard against, against the grain, really against the flow, um, trying to become, you know, something that I thought I should be. And that's, that might be, you know, what you were saying, like people, that's a very long answer. Yeah. To what no, it's a good answer though. <laughs> <laughs> that people just can go in the direction sort of opposite of what they really are authentically. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It makes sense. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> I think um, if people are thinking like, okay, I want to, I want, I want to do this stuff and I want, Oh, can they, can you, can they come to you for help from all over the world? Or do you just see people yes. um, in, in your area yeah no actually um it's it's pretty um cool so over the years i especially covid's helped a lot mm. um covid's made us be very inventive um so yeah. we wouldn't be doing this if i wouldn't have learned I mean, how to use zoom if it wasn't for COVID. isn't it amazing i mean i yeah. i feel in a way that we're blessed that this had to happen for the universe for some reason sad that it happened the way it did but here we are so so with the alchemy, um, the first step is to look at yourself and, and look at your five elements. So what we've been doing is we, we welcome anyone from your podcast to send us videos of them walking, because what we want to do to help you understand your five elements is watch you walk. Because as you move through time and space, you're mm. exhibiting your elemental stack up, we call it your stack up. So if you're bouncing like crazy, then you're fire. If your hips are going side to side, then you're earth. If you're kind of marching, then you're wood. Um, if you're skating, then you're water. And if you're floaty, then you're metal. And that's really just very simplified. It's, it's yeah, right. much more complicated. And at the so healing... <laughs> You, don't, you probably don't need to really um, do much diagnosis. You just watch the patients come in from I the really waiting do. room. <laughs> it's so incredible. And so at the Alchemy Learning Center, we have a class all about that. The um, It's called Understanding the Five Elements. It explains all the five elements. And then we have some bits about the walking and mm -hmm. how to do it yourself. But in the meantime, you can send your videos to us and you're going to walk away from the camera and walk back towards the camera and try not to wear flowy clothes that cover you up or big, big giant shoes or flip-flops usually interfere with your walk. Yep. So you can send it to Lita at Alchemy Healing Center, uh, sorry, alchemylearningcenter.com, either one, Lita at alchemylearningcenter.com, yeah. Alchemy Healing Center is our, our um, clinic, but alchemylearningcenter.com. And so uh, if you send the walks, then we'll, we'll get will help you get to at least the top two elements that you are. And we can have a discussion about that, or you can do a zoom session with me, a consultation, and then we really get into it. And that, and that's really great. And Jay, who's the other person on our podcast, she does um, alchemical coaching where she actually does like a, a longer session with you and really helps you get into the nitty gritty about what those elements mean for you because what's the yep. point of knowing them if you don't understand what it means yeah um so that's, that's the first that's the first step and then the second step would be to actually look at do you have significant trauma in your life are you really shut down to yourself because it's not just whether or not you have trauma some people have it so much that they're they're not accessible to their own spirits Mm. And you can kind of know that when I ask them the question, are you accessible to yourself? And they go, that's a weird question, but I don't think so. I'm, I'm not, you know, they always answer it. Even okay. though they think it's the craziest <laughs> question and it's because they know their hearts are shut down. They know that, you know, the trauma was so bad. The only way they survived it was to kind of build a wall around their heart. 
Mm. And, and there are definitely people with that. And so those are a couple different issues that we need to work out right away. And that would be best done in a zoom session. And then from there, we would do um, some of the work works really translates really well to zoom, but we have to do a number of sessions to get through some of the trauma work. Um, yeah, and that's, you know, a longer commitment, obviously that that's where we'd have to do like, um, a couple months of work, maybe through the zoom in my clinic, if you want to fly all the way from Australia <laughs> or fly me to Australia, um, more people, like, more people watch this in America than Australia, actually. Yeah. Oh, cool. <laughs> so it, in, in America, uh, you can come and we, or you can go with one of my students and yeah. well, wherever we are located and you can actually, and we're, we're training people all over the world. So hopefully in Australia, there'll be someone soon. Awesome. Um, so you can actually come in person and that's a whole day. We spend the whole day with someone who's got trauma because you can't expect that to shift in an hour. And, and we, as acupuncturists, we've been trying to do this for years. Like, oh, come for an hour and we'll fix all your lifetime's problems. It's yeah. like, no, that, that's not realistic. So, so giving the person the time and the space to really allow themselves to heal. And mm. that requires a lot of just allowing things to come up, allowing them to talk through it. Some people say they don't think they've ever told anyone their whole story and a whole one setting because their story was so complex and difficult. And so just being able to speak, I say the heart needs to speak. It's not like talk therapy. It's more like allowing the spirit to speak through you instead of the mind. We're really trying to get people out of their minds because, you know, they've talked to therapists, probably tons and tons, many people that come, they they've told this story over and over again, and it's not healed. Yeah. And so by, by using the energy work, so we actually have people you know, do the points. If I'm doing zoom, we have you touch your own points and help you get in touch with the point yourself. But if it's in the clinic, you know, the practitioner is working on the points either with a needle, or I use my finger on the points, um, which is a whole different way of doing uh, Chinese medicine, mm. but it's a very, you know, accessible way of accessing the points. Yeah. It's super powerful. I mean, I, I've studied lots of Twainer. That's what I used to want to yeah. really do when I first studied it. Oh, cool. it. When I first did Chinese medicine, when I was in China. Um, and there's some things where Twainer or acupressure is stronger than acupuncture because Absolutely. you can get deep into the points that you wouldn't do with acupuncture. Absolutely. And if you're doing it right, like, yeah, yeah, some people think, oh, you know, it's not going to be as good, but it, sometimes it's better actually, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. 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 I remember years ago, one of my teachers, um, the one I mentioned, um, you know, he, he's pretty well known here in the U S and in Europe. And, uh, he, he would teach acupuncture. So he'd put a bunch of needles in and then he'd go over and he'd start doing something on someone with his finger and they'd all be going, what are you doing? What are you doing? He goes like, Oh, don't, don't, don't worry about it. You know, cause <laughs> and I, I talked to him later and said, what are you doing? He goes, Oh, I do what you do. <laughs> I prefer it that way. <laughs> So, so years ago I was like, all right, all right, I'm on the right track. So I, I really love doing it with my fingers, my hands instead mm. of, even though what I'm doing is very light touch, it's, it's pure energetics. It's mm. not pressure. Yeah, Acupressure right. is kind of a weird, weird word for it. It's really yeah. energy work. Okay. Yeah. So interesting. So interesting. <laughs> So yeah, that's super interesting. Um, and I'm sure that's lots of things for people to think about, especially if they want to get that personal help, like they're, they're on their own personal journey. Um, yes. And I always encourage people to go and see a practitioner and not to just use YouTube. YouTube isn't your doctor. <laughs> it's, not, right. it's, not your, it's not your medicine. Um, you know, and I'm surprised sometimes at the level of personal questions people put on YouTube. I know, it's incredible. Um, and I, and I understand that people are seeking help and they sometimes just don't know where to start and they don't know where, and, and they might've been messed about with all different things, different, you know, by the system. And this mm -hmm. sounds like another opportunity for people that maybe uh, they want something psychological, but not within the Western medicine system, obviously it's exactly. something completely different, but it's going to help them with that mind body connection through, um, the channels and the, and the points that you're using, but also through exactly. a, a kind of like a higher level, I guess, of understanding. And this is nothing that 
a T like you wouldn't TCM practitioners wouldn't learn this in in their school. Like you mentioned those 13 ghost points. I've taught those before and I've like the amount of time it's allocated for it's like almost like, well, here's a category of points that you might want to use. <laughs> at exactly. some point and you go through the ghost way exactly. and there's all different like point names and and it's like really interesting but then the students are like well how do we use these and some of them they're like are we going to use them because they're in really unusual positions <laughs> of them. And, they are. and it just kind of skipped over in that way and it was only until I spoke to a five element acupuncturist who is she's been on my channel a few times now but she said like in the UK, cause she did a five element, went to a five element school. She said like, Oh, they needle Ren one as part of the school. Whereas here in Australia, they don't let the students needle it in the class. They just say, Oh, we're yeah. not doing that point. Um, anyway, that's a side, a side bit. Right. People could go yeah. online and see what that point is. Yeah. Ren, Ren one is in a very personal place. Well, actually yeah. one of the ghosts, one of the ghost points is Ren one, Yeah, which is that I'll just, say it's in the yep. perineum area yep. and and so we i'm i'm actually doing a workshop coming up this end of this month about the ghost points and and the reason that i teach this is they're they're widely known like you can look them up they're not a mystery but no one knows what to do with them and mm. so i've been practicing this you know out of my 20 years at least 15 years on a weekly basis with people just really getting to understand what these points really mean and that they're it's not just sticking the needle in and leaving the room it's it's really being present with the person it's really almost like a ritualistic acupuncture it's 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 got to have a lot more it's it's like a taoist um uh ritual in in terms of like being present we play music while we're doing it um that's random because in the old you know the old days they would be playing flutes and drums and yeah all kinds of things it's like a shamanic treatment really um so you have to look at it that way it's it's not uh again not day-to-day -day chinese medicine it's not that standard acupuncture i need to fix my elbow and my you know sniffle uh mm -hmm. it's 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 really getting to the core of someone i say it's changing cellular patterns and so I even have a lot of therapists that refer to, to us for the ghost points because they can't get at it even through talk therapy yep. because it's like in the body and it's in the subconscious. And so the, the yeah. person's not able to even articulate what the issue is. It's so stuck in the cellular level. Yeah. Yeah. I think any, any acupuncturist would probably agree that like there's some things where you see a result happen with patients that's you can't you have no idea like what's that that mind body connection and people have this shift that goes on and it's stuck almost mm -hmm. unexplainable and and yeah there's so many areas that are unexplored and I think in Chinese medicine in general we're just so bogged down in having to know everything with the research it's like oh we've got to prove it we've got to yeah. know <laughs> like the yeah. we've got to get those peer-reviewed blind controlled studies and all this it's like there's some yeah. things you're never going to get the result from those things yeah. to know. I, mean, I, I, I was, I, I'm very humble and I, I really believe the medicine does the work, but a, a while ago, someone painted me this, this wonderful little painting that says, this is where the magic happens. And I have it in my room at the clinic because it really is like magic sometimes, as you know, like you don't know why it works, but it works. And so that's really what happens day to day with alchemy is that magical component that only the spirit in someone can, can create. It's, it's not the needle. It's not even the acupuncture. It's, it's some magical, unexplainable thing that can happen that can free someone from mm. whatever's, you know, causing them trouble. Now, the, the, net, the other thing I wanted to mention is that beyond that trauma and releasing it, the next step in alchemy is called the nine stages of alchemy. And that's where we want to get you evolving forward, you know, not looking back at the past and all the horrible things that have happened. Yes, we need to clear that. Let's get rid of that baggage. Let's unload it. But then to go forward from there, which is hard for people who are stuck in that trauma and that obsessive thinking about the past, but to imagine that you're going to go forward into something new and who is the full capacity of who you are, like, who is that person? And that's the nine stages of alchemy, which is like based on treatments. This is uh, something that we can also do long distance via Zoom, where you go through 
these stages of alchemy and there's meditations to do. We wrote a book called Through the Mystery Gate, which yeah. is all about the nine stages of alchemy and how to progress through them. I mean, everything is in there. It's like a manual. Right. And so you just really go through and look at how do I, you know, if I were going, you know, a lot of people do Buddhist meditation and it's wonderful, but Taoist meditation is really different. And so this is the Taoist approach to kind of like pursuing a path of enlightenment. Like how mm. can I get myself to evolve, to cultivate myself into something more than, you know, what I am right now. And that's the nine stages of alchemy, yeah, which are not the nine palaces, which okay. we talk a lot about. <laughs> Just to be clear, there's a lot of nines in Chinese medicine. They love Chinese numerology is great, but in, in the nine palaces, which you talk about a lot in our podcast. So if you go back to season one of our podcast, Inspired Action, you'll get to learn about the nine palaces. And the nine palaces are really important for your elemental knowledge because once you understand that you're fire or metal or whatever you are, then you also know what are the most important things in your life. So for a wood person, it's health and wealth. And for a fire person, it's relationships and prosperity, you know, being able to freely yeah. give of yourself to others. And for earth, it's um, the home, the home palace, both physically a uh, physical home, the people in your house, the family, but also the spiritual home. Who's my spiritual family? Where does that, you know, where's that in my life? Mm. And then for metal, it's creativity. That's why a lot of artists, it's also um, children uh, in the sense of like having a legacy. Um, and then water is about um, wisdom, but also career, the skills that you need to garner to to do whatever you need to do in life so it's always that path that forward movement that water has mm -hmm. moving you forward on your career your path and then the yeah. wisdom that you achieve once you do have all these experiences so that's the water element so those are the nine palaces as they pertain to each of the elements mm -hmm. and you can see how they're so helpful because they're the nine palaces are the things every human being needs to attend to like without exception those nine things we all need to figure it out. We need yeah. to figure out our health. We need to figure out how we're going to make a living. Like, mm. <laughs> you know, we need money. Sorry. We need, you know, we need money. Um, you know, we needed a relationship. We need, you know, human beings are meant to have relationships. We're, we're communal. Mm. So all of these things are extremely important. And so that's part of understanding your five elements. So that's why we have another class called Understanding the Nine Palaces on the Alchemy Learning Center as well. After yeah, you right. do the five elements class. How, how long have you been <laughs> how long have you been running the learning center and making all these videos for it? All yeah, we just things. started a year ago and it's wow. going great. Yeah. And we have um, a lot of these types of things that we're talking about. We also have stuff for practitioners because yeah. a big focus of my work is to teach practitioners how to do the ghost points, how to do the um, there's a treatment for the nine heart pains, another nine, which is related to the nine palaces. And um, there's all these different treatments that we do to help people who are blocked in many different ways. And I'm really um, trying to, to make sure that there's people all over the world doing this work. So you don't have to fly to see me <laughs> to, yeah, awesome. to get the work done. Yeah. And then, um, there, you know, some of the other, um, uh, Chinese medicine things like you, I, I teach cupping and gua sha. I teach some of the classical Chinese medicine, like the divergence is in one we just did, which is um, now on the site for joint pain and arthritis. So yeah, those right. are the types. Of, so those are more, you know, technical, but not all just alchemy. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's so great. Like that's one of the reasons why I started the, this podcast, because like, when you study Chinese medicine, you're taught like, oh, you're supposed to be like helping people live a hundred healthy years as a practitioner, but there's not enough time in the consult to give them all of this information. <laughs> it's probably just my nature. I'm just like, don't you want to know everything that could keep you healthy forever? Um, and, but, and, and you do such a good job. It's oh, really lovely what you're doing. And it's, it's like a service to the world. Like we really, we really need that. And, yeah. But uh, your stuff is a service too. And it's like another, it's another service and that's great because it's, this is, this is what keeps you healthy. It's not necessarily like it's it, okay. Yeah. Okay. You might be treating things or fixing things that have happened to you, but once all that's finished, 
yeah and you are a balanced person like what next so it's great that there's like a there's a step-by-step thing for for that because there's lots of people in the world that just want to be better they want to be the best version of themselves yes and And, they're willing to put the work in the perfect question that I always ask is if you're at that place in your life that like this is good but is there more than this like is there more to life than this that's when you get to do the, the forward looking alchemy. Like, yeah, that's, that's the best place to be, to start alchemy. It's like, I'm yeah. good, but isn't there something else I could be doing? Like what else, what else is there? And then one of my clients said recently uh, from France, he said, well, Lita alchemy is everything. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> so it's yeah. cool. But that's why I started the podcast as well, Marie. I just, I just needed my clients to, I couldn't tell them everything in the short times we spent mm-hmm. together. So I created the podcast to explain all this background to alchemy because I, I like you, I, it's like, it's a lot of information. I mean, Chinese my medicine is lifetimes worth of studying. So, mm. so I never get bored. That's great. But, um, but you know, no one can really learn it in a very short period of time. And so that's why the podcast is helpful. I agree. Yeah. That's awesome. So great. <laughs> um, yeah. Awesome. So people can jump onto your podcast to learn more about um, the various aspects. Is there a certain yeah. place you'd advise people to jump into? Like, should they start from the beginning or should they just start any, anywhere? I'd really recommend starting from the beginning. Um, we, we were learning in the beginning a couple of years ago. So the audio is not as perfect on those first couple episodes, but we hang in there. We're and they're very mm. fun episodes. Um, and we have a lot of humor. We just, we just love to have a good time. So they're, they're worth listening to. And particularly if you don't know a lot about the five elements and the nine palaces, that whole first season is about the five elements and the nine palaces and just alchemy as a concept. And so I think it's the best place to start. And then right now you might be interested in what we've been doing for season five. We're on season five. Um, for season five, we're walking people through the first stage of alchemy. So if, if you want to jump ahead, that's mm-hmm. fine. You know, what we're doing in the, in, in, in these like podcasts, I don't know, maybe the last five or 10 of them is just really helping people understand why would I do alchemy? What does that really mean? And how do I, you know, begin? And so this, so we're actually this week, we were, we already launched into the first steps of stage one of alchemy. So it explains how to do that. Mm, Yeah. And and you can, you, you can optionally have a session with me, a consult, but, but everything in the podcast is there. Everything in the book is there. Like if you want to explore this on your own, you know, you can it's cool. Yeah. Great. Awesome. Um, yeah. I, I think sometimes like, I don't know if this is what you would say, maybe the Wu way is about as well. Like you were saying about sometimes, you know, you feel like you're at a point in your life where you're like, is there more to my life? But do you think that sometimes you get to a point where it's like almost like life's blocking you from what you supposed thought you were supposed to be doing? <laughs> like for instance, you know, people lose their job or something happens and they, or the, world goes to shit like it is with the virus or something happens and they think oh I'm not doing it right or what's wrong with me and it's almost like is that a good place to be in in terms of it's now it's time to explore this and think yeah um where am I supposed to be yeah and that's why um Jay who does our alchemical life strategy sessions we call them coaching it's all about the nine palaces because if, if we sat you down and you're in that situation, you're like, Oh, I'm being blocked. I can't move. I can't, ah, you know, I, I, it's like, you get frustrated because, you know, you, you know, like, I don't know, it's art for you. It's all about art. You're an artist and like, you know, your relationships blocking you, your, you know, your wealth palaces, but you know, whatever it is, you have all these blocks and, and you're frustrated. And then just sitting down and looking at the nine palaces as everyone needs to deal with this. This isn't about you. This is about life. Life is having to deal with these nine things, Mm. no matter what. And so once you start to realize you can prioritize the thing that matters most, and if you're neglecting it, there's a reason you're neglecting it. And so then you can start to look at these other palaces as, hey, this relationship palace is this big. And this, this thing that matters most to me is this big. That's not balanced. 
So yeah. how do I get this to get less? And how do I get this to, you know, sorry, how do I get this to be, you know, the same? And so what, what we start to do with these life strategy sessions is say, look, how can you make the changes? They're not easy. They're a little bit hard, but they, sh you know, alchemy is like, but they can be easy. It's just putting yourself first. And that's hard mm. for people. It feels selfish, but truly it's not because if you're recognize that a little selfishness means everyone gets to benefit. And why is that? Because you have a gift to give to the world. Your mm -hmm. special gift has to get out to the world. If you don't be selfish and prioritize that, then everyone else who needs your gift loses. Yeah. So one of the ghost points, one of the ghost points is ghost market. Mm -hmm. And it's about how do I get my gift out to the world? How do I explain to people, this is who I am. This is my reason for being, this is why I'm here. I've got this, here's my, here's my gift, you know, for you to take. But if you're like all messed up about, I don't know, all the other palaces and you, you can't even speak what that gift is, Yeah. then you're not, you're not sort of fulfilling yourself. And then you'll die feeling incomplete someday. And the goal of Taoism, Taoism is how do I die feeling complete? How do I, um, if I'm not immortal, <laughs> yeah. how do I, how do I end this existence, but feel it with a sense of satisfaction, with a sense of fulfillment, with a sense of completion. I got yeah. to do that thing. I got to be the artist. I got to create something beautiful in the world that's meaningful or whatever it is, mm -hmm. whatever that gift is, like I got to do that. And that's a sense of satisfaction and fulfillment that, you know, we're looking for, for just, on, that's not even alchemy. That's just like, how do I get my life, you know, to work that way? But alchemy helps make it easy. The, the thing that's so magical about alchemy is once I start doing stage one of alchemy, which is all about ease, just create it easy in your life. All these problems resolve themselves by themselves. Like it's, it, it is really magical. Like we start doing stage one and there's this problem and that problem. And, you know, I have this story of this guy who had so many problems. It, it was just like, everyone was attacking him in the world and everything was wrong. Mm -hmm. And, um, it took a year to get through stage one. He really had a lot, but by the end, everything had resolved everything like his relationship resolved, his work resolved, his health resolved. It's like all these things just, and he, he didn't even like try. It was just yeah. happened. Yeah. And so that's, that's a cool thing about alchemy is it, it happens organically sort of under the surface. Mm. Um, we don't have to put a lot of mental work into it because the spirit is the one that's sort of bringing you through alchemy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it sounds like it's just super important to have a person to guide you because people try to do all this stuff by themselves and they get stuck yeah. and then they yeah. think, oh, that thing doesn't work, but it's not the thing. It's just that they are trying it themselves. And it, like, every, uh, I don't know if everyone's guilty of that, but <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> it's up to me. I'm I, just like, ah, just try it myself. <laughs> it's, I and agree. then, yeah, you get help from someone else or you got a coach or someone's guiding you. Um, and right. sometimes you think, oh, I wish I'd done this earlier. I would have been I could have saved myself all this trouble. Exactly. exactly. Um, yeah. And, yeah. And we, yeah. we often say that you like, you know, you're, you're going through this, um, in a specific order. So, so you could jump ahead and, and it's a tendency to want, we always want to jump ahead. Like there stage five of alchemy is where you get to the point where there's no good or bad. That's hard to do, but mm. you could do it today. You could today say for the rest of the day, I'm not going to think good or bad about anything. And I bet you could do it. Mm. And I know you could do it, Marie. <laughs> it's that, Maybe not everyone. It's actually quite hard for me. <laughs> it's really hard, right? It's yeah. really hard. But so that's a high level concept, right? Yeah. Yeah. So even if you were able to achieve it because you work really hard at it and then you really, you know, put some effort into it. If you didn't do the first four stages, you really can't maintain that. And it'll eventually bump up against other things that are in the way, mm. um, you know, other concepts in your head and you'll start kind of like freaking out. So, so all I say is that the nine stages of, of nine stages of alchemy are in a specific order because a bunch of really smart guys and a few women <laughs> uh, centuries ago said, Hey, if we do mm. our personal growth work in this order, it works better. That's all mm. they said. 
It's like, hey, look, if we do it linearly, linearly in this order, it's great. It works better. Yeah. And so if you mix them up and you do them out of order, not so great. There's mm. like gotchas in there. And even sometimes like um, just the idea that you become this like light beam at one of the stages. And so you, all the energy rises up to the head and you kind of almost glow mm. for real. Like people really change, like their right. countenance really, really changes. Mm. That can be really unsettling if you haven't done the, the trauma work and the, you know, releasing the baggage and all that stuff. Yeah. Yep. And you can kind of like lose your, you know, lose your mind a little bit. Like if you mm. do that just without without some guidance, because it's, you know, a lot of people say Kundalini blowouts, you know, Kundalini overload. It's yeah, like right. that. It's like a Kundalini thing. Like and the so, erroneous Chi Gong kind of thing. Is it like yes, that? Where it just kind yes. of builds up the Chi and they're like, oh, where does this go? <laughs> exactly. So if you, if you don't sort of pay attention. Yeah. So again, that's why the ancients, you know, the alchemists mm. said, hey, let's do it in this order, because if you do it in this order, you won't get that problem. Yeah. And so the, that that's, I think you're right, Marie. It is. That's why we wrote the book. That's why we have the podcast. That's why we have, we have all these things to to kind of support the idea that if you want to become an alchemist, if you want to kind of evolve yourself into more than just what you were born with, and, you know, there is more to life than this, Mm. then, then, you know, you know, follow the wisdom that is there in the path before you, you know, these, these people left this wisdom for us they explored it you know they worked really hard why should we reinvent the wheels yeah exactly yeah yeah. so yeah yeah. (laughs) it's uh, the the thing i love the most about chinese medicine especially like i've spent the last uh well not in the last two years but before that three years before that i started doing classical chinese medicine so studying um more um shanghai lun's um herbs particularly right and my teacher always just reminds everybody all the time. He's like, remember, a sage looks backwards, yeah. you know, like towards their ancestors. He's like, you don't yes. look for like the sage doesn't look forwards. The sage looks right. backwards. And it's completely the opposite in Western medicine. It's like you're always, oh, what's the newest thing? What's the latest what's thing? The Who, oh you know, God. and it's I was so true. <laughs> I was telling someone at my school the other day, like someone was saying, oh, this student drop, dropped out and it's been two years and then they want to come back and they're like wondering if, you know, they could pick up where they left off. And I was like, well, Chinese medicine hasn't changed. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, I, she's just an admissions officer person. And she's like, what do you mean? I said, well, it hasn't changed for 2,000 <laughs> years. It hasn't changed in the last two years. She goes, oh, I didn't think of that. I'll tell them that. And then the student like re-enrolled the class. You know, like, yeah, the modern stuff changes as in, you know, new research happens and all that. But like the concepts and those things, are, it's like the knowledge is never wasted, yeah. right? The stuff you learn now is going to serve you in perpetuity forever. Like it's never going to change. It's right. just knowing more and more and doing more research into the past, not not sort of having to think, oh, I might learn this. And then what if something new happens and I don't need this knowledge anymore? What a waste. Like that never, <laughs> never happens. happens with Chinese medicine. <laughs> So that's what I love the most. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Awesome. Yeah. It's been so great to have you to interview Wonderful. you. Um, I love so great to be here to your yeah. podcast. Um, I still will keep listening to it because I've only <laughs> only just scratched the surface of a few. I just Wonderful. dipped around. I probably listened to about three different seasons and different ones. Um, but it's you've got lovely voices and a Thank great you. personality and a, and you and a light hearted nature and you know that's always appealing for people from. Australia (laughs) yeah we like a bit of laughter and a bit of banter uh uh, Jay my co-host is hysterical she keeps me laughing every podcast so you always laugh we try to get at least one good laugh in every podcast yeah (laughs) it's good to be real about it right like keeping it real and just being earthy and and helping people to go from the level they're at where they don't know anything about it and like you know sometimes it can seem like this stuff's too unattainable for people yeah. Because they're they're like, how do I start? How do I get to where you are? They can't see any inroad there, or they can't see that. Are you even a real person? Like, yeah. <laughs> how do I live like that? When awesome. I first started, uh, my goal, the one thing I said the very first time I learned the five elements was everyone needs to know this stuff. Mm. Like, why? why don't we all know this? Why is it just a few acupuncturists? Mm. And like, I was like, everyone needs to know this stuff. And 
I think Marie, you've got that in, in your, your, you know, gifts as well. It's like, how do we make this accessible mm. to other people? And that's been my goal all along is like, I'm not just teaching acupuncturists and Chinese medicine people. I want to teach everyone about this information because I don't think it should be kept in a little box, you know, stored away just for the, 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 you know, the wise people. I think it really belongs in everyone's hands. And yeah. Awesome. That's so that's great to know if you're a practitioner watching this, that you've got resource and you've got things like if you, if you're yes. looking for CPD things like can, yeah. pr professional point type of yes. things. Yes. We can um, see use here yeah. that I think are maybe transferable to Australia. Well, in Australia, the rules are you make your own um, goals and you find a courses that fit those goals. No one gives points anymore. So okay. we can choose what we want. A lot of practice don't, practitioners don't know that. Because there's yeah. some people extorting the system saying, oh, I've got an approved course, but there aren't any approved courses actually. Yeah. Um, so they can easily do your course with yes. um, no worries for APRA if they want to. Well, we're um, approved with the NCCAOM and the NCBTMB, which doesn't matter in Australia, but in the US, that's a big deal. So yeah, uh, right. Yeah. There's most people watching this are probably from the US and UK, yeah. I think mostly. Yeah. Um, and I've got a few Great. diehard fans in Sydney. <laughs> oh, wonderful. <laughs> awesome. Um, so check out um, the, the Inspired Action podcast as well and the book that yeah. you've got behind you. Yeah, um, the Mystery Gate. Yeah. Um, just came out. So we'd love to just offer that to the world. You can get it also electronically and soon on Audible. Awesome. Yep. That yeah. sounds great. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, is it you reading it on Audible? Yes, I will be reading it on Audible. I'm, oh, fantastic. I'm, I actually have a closet right over there that's all set up for reading Audible books now. <laughs> and we have two other books on the five elements, Connecting Your Circle and The Energy of Love, which is about relationships in the five elements. Awesome. Well, we'll, we'll put all your links below this episode, Brilliant. wherever it comes, wherever you're finding Brilliant. it, or if you're listening on um, Apple or um, Spotify or something like that, yeah. um, go to the show notes and the link will be there. And if you can't yes. find that, just jump on the YouTube and the links will definitely be up there. Um, so, yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed listening. I've been <laughs> having a great time. Thank you so much for your time and um, oh, really appreciate it. You. And um, hope you have a great rest of the day. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I had a blast. It was great to get to know you, Marie. And awesome. No worries. I wish you all the best with the podcast. It's fantastic. Thank Keep you. Keep going. <laughs>